We want to take you live now to the National Press Club where a news conference is just beginning to get underway, sponsored by the Center for Science and the Public Interest. The issue, the call by the FDA on some of the produce, including the tomatoes that you eat and the traceability of these produce. On your screen is Caroline Smith-DeWall, who is a food safety director for the Center for Science and the Public Interest. We'll show you live coverage for the next half hour or so. It's not intended as criticism of the hardworking public professionals at the federal, state, and local level who are on the front lines of this investigation. New tools in the federal government are uncovering new clusters of illness faster than the government and the states can investigate or respond. To better understand these outbreaks, we'll take new resources at the federal, state, and local level. But the benefits of preventing these illnesses, and the Centers for Disease Control estimates there are over 76 million cases of illness, 325,000 hospitalizations, and 5,000 deaths each year. The benefits of preventing these illnesses will accrue to both consumers and the food industries involved. That is why there are, there are new efforts on Capitol Hill that unite both consumer and industry organizations to support the strengthening of the Food and Drug Administration. Each outbreak causes huge losses, both for the consumers who become severely ill and for the growers who often can't sell their products. Unfortunately, as this investigation has dragged on, the produce industry is reaping what it sowed when it sought and received special exemptions that allowed the industry to, to avoid the country of origin labeling requirements Congress passed in 2002. Though new requirements are scheduled to go into effect later this year, FDA needs to go beyond country of origin labeling and give public health officials the, the ability to trace produce from the farm all the way to the consumer. Today we issue an urgent call to commit to FDA Commissioner Von Eschenbach to take action to prevent future produce outbreaks. We urge the commissioner to propose emergency regulations known as interim final rules to accomplish three things. First, FDA should establish a tracking system for produce. Second, the agency should require all growers and other handle it, others handling produce to have written food safety plans for their operations. Finally, the agency should place tighter controls on repacking produce to ensure that the information regarding the origin of these items are preserved. The steps we urge are entirely within the realm of what is technologically feasible and what is already being used by many sectors of the food industry. Beside me are examples of fruits and vegetables that already carry the types of tags that would allow FDA to better trace these products during an investigation. With the adoption of FDA standardized codes, information on the products could be carried along the distribution chain and be recorded and amended along the way by new handlers and by new processors. This is not rocket science. Existing systems could be used from these simple stickers, which are so popular among elementary school children, to sophisticated RFID tags, laser, laser printing, um, inkjet printing right on eggs. These are not technologies that the food industry is unfamiliar with. And any of these techniques could be used with a standardized code that would allow FDA to recognize product, to track product, and allow it to be recorded and trans as it moves from point to point along the distribution chain. Written plans are another simple concept that could have a revolutionary impact on the safety of vegetables and fruits. We all know that if we need to improve in one area or another, we develop a plan. For food producers, written plans have proved invaluable 
to manage safety for such products as seafood, meat, poultry, and even juice. While problems can still occur, it becomes much easier to audit systems and identify failures when plants are operating under a food safety plan, so-called HACCP plans. Requiring food processors and producers to identify possible hazards and outline a control plan would put clear responsibility on the industry to know the food safety profiles of its products and to put systems in place to prevent those problems from occurring. Designing these plans would be the responsibility of the farmer or the processor who knows their system best. Farmers, for example, know the environmental conditions and weather in the area better than any regulator and should be in the driver's seat when it comes to food safety. Finally, the practice of mixing and matching produce items at distribution centers should not take precedence over the need for tracing these products. FDA has indicated that this practice, known as repacking, has significantly hamstrung its investigations. And we call on the commissioner to place whatever limits on this practice as are necessary to preserve the record of the product's origin back to the farm. When an outbreak happens, it exposes many gaps. There is a lot of frustration that FDA cannot tell us specifically where the tomatoes are from, or even whether tomatoes are the real cause of the Salmonella St. Paul illnesses. Yet, this is a very common situation. Most outbreaks are never investigated to this level. In fact, the majority of the outbreaks reported to CDC lack an identified food or pathogen. While CSPI has tracked over 750 produce outbreaks in the last 16 years, with, with many more escape our review because critical information was lacking. If we want better and faster identification of the causes of outbreaks, Food safety programs at the federal, state, and local levels must be funded and given the tools to complete their investigations. If we want to prevent future outbreaks, Congress needs to give FDA and USDA the funding, authority, and personnel to implement and inspect new systems for overseeing the safety of food coming from factories and farms, both in the United States and from countries that ship to us. Finally, to minimize the size of outbreaks like the current one, new tools like mandatory tracing and recall systems and stronger enforcement authorities like civil penalties are essential. Ultimately, replacing our antiquated food laws with modern authorities under the mandate of a unified Federal Food Safety Agency would offer the most effective and efficient system for making improvements. This latest outbreak provides another lesson in how not to run the federal government. CSPI first petitioned FDA in 2006 to put new systems in place. By failing to act then, in 2006, to give FDA's food safety managers the essential tools to correct these problems and to prevent these produce outbreaks, they have turned these federal public health officials, these food safety experts, into little more than bean counters, racking up illnesses and hospitalizations and even deaths from yet another predictable outbreak linked to produce. While the goal of prevention is given lip service by the Bush administration, new regulations that could prevent the next outbreak are rarely proposed or finalized, unless Congress specifically orders them and sets timelines. Yet this is, this is a time when safeguards are sorely needed. We urge Commissioner von Eschenbach to take action further delay is simply indefensible.